Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So last time I tried to build a DIY Arduino keyboard, it didn't work out that well. And you can check out that video if you haven't seen it. But this time I kind of rethinked the entire thing and now as you can see here, it is working beautifully. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the steps how I got there. Now, I was pretty frustrated when all my hard work didn't pay off in the end uh, when I last worked on this project and it just kind of didn't really work. Uh, the bootloader wouldn't properly burn on to it, it wouldn't communicate, all that just didn't work out really well. Maybe I had some bad chips or something. There were a bunch of really great suggestions from you guys, but in the end it just kind of wasn't worth it for me to spend more time and effort on that because, let's face it, I was kind of trying to reinvent the wheel um, building my own Arduino from scratch without any electrical engineering experience. So to test if my PCB worked at all, I just soldered some wires to the leads that would go to the chip and connected them up to, uh, to an Arduino Pro Micro separate to the board to see if it would work at all. And it actually did work, so the PCB itself wasn't bad or anything. Now what I couldn't get working was the lighting and I kind of suspect that I took the footprint basically from the bigger 5050 uh, LEDs and scaled it down for the 3535 but it, that didn't really work as this, the pads for that need to be different so it wasn't making proper contact. That was kind of a bummer since I really wanted to see how the RGB lighting looked with the addressable NeoPixel LEDs but, well, that was just not going to happen in that version. So with some newfound confidence and a lot of stuff that I learned, I went to design a second generation of the PCB. And as you can see here, this is what it turned out to. And at this point, I want to give a huge thanks to PCB Waste. They made this PCB again for me and it looks absolutely beautiful. It's very, very high quality. I've put this thing through hell and back and it's just really high quality. They also have really affordable prices. If you have a smaller project up to 10 by 10 centimeters, then you can get 10 PCBs for only $5, which is just a steal. So make sure to check out PCB Way linked down below to see all their great offers. So what I did differently in this version of the PCB is I didn't try to make my own Arduino again. That didn't work out very well and I think that's something that I'm going to say for a later date. Instead, I just put in some holes so I could mount an Arduino Micro to it. And buying them from China, they aren't that expensive. Well, they are a lot more expensive than like the Nano because they have the fancy microchip on there. For like six bucks or something like that, you can get an Arduino Micro. And the parts that I used on the previous version to build my Arduino would cost like four bucks anyways. So I wasn't saving that much money and especially not for all the headache that it put me through. Other than that, I used the same layout that I did on my original prototype, uh, which I soldered by hand as, in my opinion, that's the best layout that you can have for a keyboard that is smaller than a 10 keyless. And the reason for me choosing this size over a 10 keyless or even a full size keyboard are two reasons. One, this is the maximum size that fits diagonally onto my CR10 so I can print the shell for it in one piece. And two, it is a lot of work soldering all this stuff by hand and even 68 keys on here took me a lot of time to solder and test and all that. So I'm really glad I didn't try a full size 105 key or even bigger keyboard. That would have just taken forever. Not to mention that these key switches, even the Chinese uh, fakes are rather expensive. And to fit all the switches into a nice keyboard, I used the model that I did for the original version here, but updated it a little bit to make it more ergonomic. And thanks to the PCB, I was also able to make it a lot slimmer. This keyboard actually is really slim, even compared to commercially available keyboards. 
and it has a natural angle built into it which makes it a little bit taller at the back which gives me enough room for the Arduino and some caps that are a little bit bigger. That way I don't have to design any flip out feet or anything and I can make it really skinny at the front which makes it much more comfortable to, to, to type without having it too small at the back that the Arduino wouldn't fit. That's the only like big advantage to having the Arduino built into the board is that you only have the thickness of the board and you can also put the connector wherever. With this board I only had one choice to put the Arduino. The only place where it would fit was to the side here which meant that the USB port for the keyboard was going to be on the left side which is not really where I would want to put it. Now in the last minute I also put a USB C port up here in the corner on the top the, and just kind of put some pads there that I could connect it up. I didn't run any uh, wires on the PCB, just put it there, last minute decision, so I thought maybe I could connect it up. And as you're gonna see later, that turned out to be a really good idea. But on the first try version I did here, I just used this side mounted uh, USB port, which works fine, it's not ideal, but it is good. So I printed another shell for it, fitted all the keys into it and I assembled a first one of these. Now a PCB way did send me over this sheet which has all cut holes cut into it and this makes it a lot easier to solder the SMD since like you can put this on top and then spread the solder paste over it and it's going to be perfectly applied for all the different spots. But even with this soldering this big of a board with, well, there are 68 LEDs that all have four pins that are connected. There are 68 keys, there are 68 diodes and a couple other components. It took a long time to solder all of this. Especially since I don't have that much experience yet with SMD work. Now, going through all of this, it gave me a lot more experience and I got a lot faster as time went on and I learned a ton. So when I had the first one assembled then I plugged it in to try to see if all the LEDs would nicely work uh, as this time I had updated all the footprints and I was really sure that it was gonna work and it didn't work in the beginning. So I just kind of was mad at these LEDs and thought well I don't want to deal with that and since I also had some Cherry MX speed switches laying around that don't have a cutout for the LEDs anyways, I decided to take another board and first assemble one keyboard that doesn't have any LEDs. And that's where I ran into the next problem. I didn't really pay any attention to how the keys felt before I soldered them up and well to say that they didn't work that well, it was an understatement. A lot of them were just kind of bind up and stick really hard and well, what I found out that the reason for that is that I didn't deeper all the holes. It took quite a lot of force to push, push the switches in there but I thought that, that's fine, these switches are built very well and then they would stick in there nicely and wouldn't come out. But the big big problem with that is that when the pinch the switches from the side, they become sticky and they don't activate that well. So that meant a lot of work again. So I had to individually disorder all the switches, take them out, clean up the hole with a knife, then put them back in, make sure that they're nice and smooth. And that took a couple hours to say the least. And I was really frustrated, but I got through it and then it worked a lot better. I also connected it up to the computer at that point, updated my software just a little bit from the last time. I now wired up the switches so that they, uh, they are numbered through row by row, which makes it a lot easier in the software. Here I had it so that it was optimal to solder, which makes more sense for if you're soldering manually, but then it means that the switches in the logic are just randomly assigned. This way they're all nicely in order, which makes it a lot more convenient to program. So I loaded the software onto it and it worked beautifully. I was so happy that 
this was finally working. I had a fully keyboard with a nice PCB that was working. Then I decided, why not make some custom keycaps for it? I didn't have any keycaps on hand uh, that would fit this. And so I decided, let's 3D print some. I 3D printed some keycaps with my Ender 3, just an escape key, and it worked kind of well. So I thought, well, let's do that. And I also found on Thingiverse a really, really great program for OpenSCAD to generate all kinds of different keys. You can put, put in all the parameters and it's a really, really great program. I'm gonna have the link below. Huge kudos to whoever programmed that. Great, great job. So I decided to make some DSA keys, row three, so it's flat for all of them. And printed all of them in the correct sizes. It took a couple tries since the stems wanted to come loose while printing and all of that stuff. It was kind of a nightmare to print, but then I had them all. And putting them on, well, I had to do a lot of sanding to get them to work and not bind with each other. And they still look kind of rough. Now, I did use a feature inside of Cura, which is adaptive layer height. That basically means it's gonna analyze the model and change the layer height depending on what kind of geometry there is. This cut down on the print time drastically. It allowed me to have a very low layer height of like 0.05 uh, millimeters or even less uh, in on the top part where it is slightly concave and have a much higher layer height for the rest, which makes them print so, so much faster. But still, they are kind of rough on the top and took a lot of sanding to get smooth and also the sides. I tried making some of them really nice and perfect, sanding them, but it took like over 10 minutes per key. And if you quickly do the math in your head, 68 keys, 10 minutes each, that's over 10 hours of sanding. And I was not gonna do that. So I did a lot, much more rudimentary sanding for most of the other keys, just to kind of get them to work. It doesn't look perfectly nice yet, and I might go over and sand them a little, little bit more, but. For now, it, it works fine. I swear to me though, that I'm never gonna make a full set of 3D printed keycaps ever again. It's just not worth the trouble at all. But I think the finished result here looks just absolutely stunning. The pattern I chose, I'm really happy with. Uh, there are, isn't any lettering on the keys, but thanks to the colors, it's really easy to find out which ones are which keys and the function key has a different color. And up here, I also number five and number zero or F5 and F10 respectively are different color, which makes it a lot more easier to find all the different keys. I could easily use this keyboard day to day. Well, I prefer having a full size keyboard, but if I was gonna use a small keyboard, this would be what I would use. Now, I would of course clean it up a little bit more to make it a lot more comfortable to type on, but, but considering it's a DIY prototype, I was extremely happy. And then just yesterday, I decided to try and get to the LEDs to work again. I went through some testing, hooked up an external power supply, and all of a sudden, some of the LEDs started to light up. Now, at first, only the first four lighted up. So I resoldered the fifth LED and almost all of the LEDs started to light, light up. Some of them in between didn't light up, but the next one would light up again. Just a reminder, they're all wired up, uh, row by row, like that, connected up. And they are kind of smart LEDs. So they have power and they have ground, plus they have a data in and a data out. I just connect one, the first LED to the Arduino, and then I say like the, this many LEDs are this color and I, they all have a number and I can address them individually. That's from the NeoPixel library. That is really convenient. And in my opinion, it looks beautiful. So I had to replace some of the LEDs as it turned out some of them were shot or at least some colors uh, were not working on them. But as you can see here, I managed to get all of them to work. And some of you correctly pointed out in the last video where I mentioned which LED I was gonna use, that 
a full board of these would blow the power budget of a USB port in no time, as they can use up to like 30 milliamps, I think, per LED. And if you do the math again, that's way, way more amperage than a USB can, port can supply. You shouldn't exceed 500 milliamps, ideally. So since they would also blind you if you would use all the power, I software limited to them to about a quarter power, which is still plenty bright. Even in bright light, they shine really nice and colorful bright. And, and the whole power consumption of the entire board with Arduino on all the lights lit up is somewhere around 250 milliamps, which is perfectly fine for any USB port. What I had to do though to get them to work is not power them through the Arduino. For some reason, even if I just connected up one LED to the power of the Arduino, it just wouldn't work. I can't figure out for the life of me why that is, but what I did was to use the USB-C port that I built in. I'm so glad I added that last minute. I quickly soldered on that USB port and first just connected up power to it and used power from that and data th through there and it worked beautifully. Then I also hooked up the data leads to some bare pins on the Arduino Micro which are designed for that purpose and for the first time ever in this project something worked first try. I was blown away. I just plugged in the USB to the computer and it just worked. I couldn't believe it uh, that it worked first try since I also had to have some very long air wires in there which is way less than ideal but it worked and I now have data and power through the USB-C port which lights up all the LEDs and it makes the USB keyboard work. So once I had all the LEDs working, I quickly printed another keyboard shell, this time in white, so the LEDs would shine even more, and assembled it. Turns out that if you know everything, all the quirks, assembling the second time took me way less time. It took me like maybe like two hours to assemble the whole thing, whereas it took me probably around 10 hours for this keyboard, not counting the time I spent on the keycaps. So looking back, I think this project is a smashing success. I now have two functional keyboards, one with addressable RGB lighting that looks absolutely phenomenal and one that is a lot cleaner without lighting but with I think a really beautiful layer as well. It is by no means perfect. There are some really annoying quirks like the Arduino is covering up two of the switches so you have to solder in all the switches before you solder in the Arduino. And once you solder in the Arduino, you can't solder out the switches again, which is really, really annoying if you mess up the order of operations or have to change something down the line. Also, there's no way to get at the top of the PCB once you solder in, in the switches, since they connect it through the print. That is the case on many actual keyboards as well, so it's probably no way around that. But the Arduino is still kind of bothering me. So in a perfect world, I would integrate the Arduino into the PCB as well, but that I don't think is for my skill level right at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this process coming along with me and uh, with this project. And if you liked it, please leave a like down below. It took me a lot, a lot of work to do this. So I would highly appreciate if you give this video a like. You can also comment all your questions and ideas and suggestions down in the comments. And if there are a lot of questions about this project, I might even do a dedicated Q&A video about this. Also, I'm gonna have the files for the shell linked down below and probably also the code, though it might take me a while to get that sorted out and make it publish publishable. So watch out for that in the description down below. So make sure to follow me, social media, all the good places. Make sure to check out PCBWay, they're a really great company. So thanks for watching and until next time.